This program is made possible by the loyal financial support of the friends and partners of Family Policy Institute. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Good evening and welcome to the show. I'm standing here at Le Bonne village just outside of Bloemfontein and we are here to talk to Avril and Willem Sneeman about the incredible work that God is doing as they take care of destitute and vulnerable children. This is an amazing place. They're growing food here. They're doing all kinds of things which is very inspiring and, and, and we came out here to inspire you to see what two ordinary people that put their faith in God can accomplish by just trusting God with the results. So hang around, we're going to be talking to Avril and also to Nathan Pillay, who is the chairperson of the board of Le, Le Bonne Village. So Avril, this is an amazing place. We've seen inside the, uh, the you know, uh, even the press clippings of what Le Bonne Village looked like. The little house, uh, the, you know, just the, the humble beginnings of this great work and what God has been doing is. But, but give us a sense of, of how you started, what your calling was, your passion, and how the Borne village became what it is today. Right. Thank you, Errol. Um, in 1997, God gave Jane Riss the vision to care for children who were left behind after their parents had passed away due to HIV and AIDS. And um, they tried to get something going to care for those children, but in they didn't get very far and in 2000 God called me to get involved with them. So on the 12th of January 2000 I said yes I would join them and in May we opened our first little house for 15 children. We did it in the old Bloemfontein prison at that stage and um, it was a two year battle getting the government to accept it and the children to get into us getting registered etc. But God was amazing. The way he just opened doors and everything worked out. So, so you started in a prison facility. You were using that and beginning to get destitute and vulnerable children into what was it called? Le Bonne Village then? When no, it was, it was in the called prison? Le Bonne House. Le Bonne That's House. where we started. Okay. Yes, if I can backtrack slightly. Everything that we're doing here started because of a need. And we have five sections running today, but the very first section was Le Bonne House. That was the first need, addressing, looking after children affected and infected with HIV and AIDS. Okay. So in the old Bloomingdale prison, we look at Le Bonny House was, where we rented a small little two-bed, two-roomed house, and we cared for these children. Mm. And then the second need that arose was when the first child, one of the children we had there had to attend school. No school would accept her because she just had never had any school readiness or anything. She was behind in everything. So we then opened Le Bonny Edu Centre where we got a pre-primary school teacher in and we started our own little school for the children there. So that was how the second need was addressed, okay. Le Bonny Edu Centre. Okay, so the first phase was the house, just taking care of the children. And these are children who, whose parents had died because of HIV AIDS. That's right. And did they also have HIV AIDS, the children? Most of them at that stage, yes, there were one or two that didn't, but most of them did. In our first year, we lost 14 children. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And, and the medical needs, how did you take care of the medical needs of these children? We were very dependent on volunteers. Um, the clinics at that stage still had some stock, so they were able to help us in certain ways. But our biggest help came from volunteer doctors who would look at the children and provide the medication. Amazing. So that was your humble beginnings then. And if we can just walk, um, you know, this is the, the entrance of Le Bonne Village here uh, outside of Bloemfontein. And uh, Nathan has been hosting us, Nathan being the chairperson of the board of Le, Le Bonne Village. Nathan, how did you get involved and why did you get involved? You know, um, uh, we, we run a business in Bloemfontein for the last um, 18 years. <clears throat> and as a business, we wanted to have an impact in, uh, in our sphere and, and contribute towards the community. And I think about 10 years ago, I got involved in Le Boni on the board. And just to 
to sit on the board and help where we can as a business. Mm. And that's how that that's where we got involved. Wonderful. Yeah. And and if you look at, at the village today, and we, we, we're going to take you right around as Avril and Nathan gives us a tour of the village. We're going to show you from that humble beginnings, which is a, a, a unused prison. How many years ago again was that? Uh, 17 years. 17 years ago, an unused prison, the uh, Laboni house started taking care of kids. From there, there was a need for education, and then the um, Laboni EduK uh, was launched. And today, with faith in God, uh, and, and people like Nathan Pele coming on board and helping this thing, as God has done such an incredible work here. So just go with us. We're going to show you uh, a little more of, of what, what God is uh, the work that God has established here at Laborneo Village, which is a true testimony to the faith of one ordinary couple, Willem and uh, Abril Sleiman. So Abril, this is such a wonderful testimony of God's grace and provision. But tell us how you come to this property. You started in the prison and now you have this wonderful property with so much going on. How did you get this property? Okay, Errol, I can, it's, it's truly as I see the hand of God, how he had plans for this, for mm. the extended vision. And what happened was in 2002, things couldn't have been worse at the old prison where we were. Um, the, the sewerage system wasn't working. It was pumping up all outside. There was a Satanistic group moved into the cells of the prison and they were very threatened by us as a Christian uh, organization. organization. Wow. And then we got a little girl. She was 18 months old. Her name was Naledi, which means star. It's okay. a Sutu word for star. And I believe God sent this special little star to fulfill mm -hmm. his plans because we had a visit from the MD of Mersk Sealand in Cape Town who wanted a, a children's choir to perform at the opening of the Bloemfontein office. Are you talking about Mersk Sealand, the container, container shipping company? That's right, yes. Wow. And Peter Arenreich flew up the day before the function and wanted to see where the choir was coming from and we took him to the prison. Well, I thought it was a disaster because it was the worst day ever with everything going wrong there. And he, we walked through and showed him everything. And as he walked into where the children were, he saw a lady lying there. She was full-blown AIDS, very, very sick. And we couldn't, you couldn't hold her. She was, you know, in so much pain. So she was in a, one of these baby chairs on the floor. And he looked at her and he fell on his knees and he started crying. And this is the, this is the MD of, of this of, yes, this global uh, company? From De Denmark, yes. Wow. And I was a bit uncomfortable when I saw the tears in that, and he just looked at me and said, you know, I've got two beautiful daughters, and I see this. I can, am can so Can I ask you touched. something? Was this man a Christian? No. No. Wow, look at yeah. that. Day. Yes. And um, that night at the function, he called Willem and I up, and he said, he has never been so touched by what we're doing. Um, he would like to donate towards, from Mersk Zealand, towards a property of our own. And we came out, we had identified this property before, but we couldn't afford it. And we had told him about it that day because he asked what the options were. And they gave us the money that night to buy this property. Just like mm. that. Just like that. God intervened. Absolutely. A non-Christian man comes in, yeah. is touched by this, this image of the sick child. Yes. And God provides just like that. That's right. And, and so God's placed you here. Mm. Absolutely. And, and you know, um, now Lady passed away three days later, <laughs> peacefully, and I really believe God sent her as part of His plan. She, she died in dignity, she had love around her, but she was the tool as well. Mm -hmm. as she was the seed. Things. That's no, right. She was the yes. seed that was planted to produce this place that is helping so many other children. Mm. Now, lady, that's right. an incredible story. Yes. So we're going to see a little bit about, you know, the food that you're growing here. Some of the people that work, you've got the children's village, you've got this wonderful place, this building here that I'm not quite sure is, but we're going to find out. So please continue with the tour. When we arrived here, the first thing my husband said, who has grew up on a farm, was, wow, look at all the place for producing vegetables. Yeah. And because food is a big problem, we're so dependent on donations, etc. And we had children to feed and the extended families that we used to care for at their homes. He immediately started. So that was the third section of Laborni 
the agricultural section. Okay, so the first was the prison, the house. The second was the educare. Now we on, on food production. Yes, so okay. we start that. And that is over this over the 17, no, sorry, 15 years when we got to this property. That has expanded incredibly, so much so that we, in partnership with KFC Ad Hope, in feeding malnourished children in the community. Wow. And, and, and this Tunnel of Hope? That is sponsored by Ad Hope. That's why it's the Tunnel of Hope for growing vegetables. And the tunnels are better than the open land because we can extend the season and we can produce so much more. So, so what are you growing in here, Avril? At this stage, I think it's the beans and tomatoes that have been planted for winter, but we have uh, pumpkins, butternuts, spinach, beetroot, carrots, tomatoes, onions. Wow. Um, and and all of this food summer. is self-produced and it goes towards feeding the children. Yes. Are you doing more, more than Yes, just... we do. We, we, we feed our children first, and then we give out um, food parcels monthly, to 574 families and 1,402 children in the community. Sure, say that again, 574 families. families. You're feeding out of out what of you're growing Out here. of Le Borne village, yes. Wow. We do, we do also get some donations that come towards it. And of course, with KFC's funding, we're able to buy the Millie Meals and the, that type of thing, you know. So, so, so KFC is just giving you funding? Yes. For food? For, for feeding um, malnourished children. And that's mm. how it happens. Um, we work very closely with the Pelinomi Hospital Pediatric Unit. Okay. When the children are um, discharged from hospital, they refer to us. We've got a clinic on the property where the pediatrician and the dietitians from the hospital come monthly to check the children. We then give them formula. And how the food parcel started actually was we were only looking after these children, these malnourished children. Till the, the doctors picked up that the children weren't gaining weight. And when we started investigating and doing home visits, we realized there's a mother with this little sick baby, but she's got four or five other children. So she was spreading the formula amongst all these children. And that's why the baby wasn't making wow. progress. And that's how it was the birthing of the food parcel project. Because now we feed the children as well. You know, it's incredible as you're telling the story, Avril and Nathan, is that it's almost like every time a need arises, then God just gave mm. a, you know, this wonderful solution to it. Always. And, and, it's, and it, what it sounds like, and just correct me if I'm wrong, is that when God provided, made a way for all these things, that it just, it's not only for a Borne village, it's extending beyond that. Mm. And what God has given you here is helping the children here, but also helping outside of the walls That's of the Borne right. village. Yes, it's, it's, we, Isn't we, God amazing? Amazing. Uh, only He could have done this. Uh, we couldn't, we didn't have the financing, we had, didn't have the hands, we didn't have the people, but he sends his people. But can, can I correct you there? You see, God can do it, but if he doesn't have the hands and the feet, if he doesn't have the people willing to say, here am I, Lord, use me, and to take the risk like you and your husband did, and come out here and do all of this. And people like Nathan Pele, a businessman, that will come on board and say, I want to help you, I want to do this, then God cannot get it accomplished because he doesn't have the people to work with. So when you've got the willing hands like you guys, and there's an amazing thing that, that God can do, and we're seeing it all around us here, but because of faithful people like you. Mm. And, and that's why we want to encourage people out there and say, look, you know, it might look impossible, and I, th I think you said it a couple of times when you started uh, trying to get the property, all of that, you said it, um, but you stepped out in faith. So, so we've got the, the tunnels here, the food tunnels, we've got KFC helping you, um, and then, of course, you know, the workplace over here. The, t just tell us about those. Right. Um, it's also, everything's got a little story here. Yes, and, and we, want, is, we want to hear the story. Okay. And that was our fourth section, the Laborni skills section. What happened was, um, I found out soon after coming to this property, we needed to build a place for the Edu Centre. And the DG Murray Trust in Cape Town, provides funding for education. So I put in an application to them for the school. And when um, Nikki Miller flew up to come and assess the project, she looked around and uh, Willem was busy teaching a man to weld in a little, just a piece of sink over a structure there. And she looked at me and she said, how does he do that? So I said, well, we've got no other facilities and we've got to treat, teach people. So she says, but can, I'm stupid. Why don't you apply for funding for skills rather? So I said, but you only fund education. She said, give us a new proposal. And that's where this building came from. They wow. paid 
gave us all the money to put up this building, which Willem used, training people in the community who didn't have work or skills, to build. So they learned construction, they learned welding, electrical, everything. And that today is where we, our skills center, where we transfer skills to people with no skills. And at that stage, it was to all the needy people in the community around Laborni village, because they, they didn't have work, they didn't have food, they didn't have anything. So that's where it started. Wow. But if I can just say, God, God was one step ahead Again, All the time. he always is. He always is. And our children, once they started reaching teenage years, we started realizing that a lot of them couldn't make it academically in the mainstream schools. So they slotted into the skill center. So whether they get them a trick or not, they're getting skills. Mm. So it's welding? Welding, carpentry, um, mechanical, Woodwork. electrical, wow. beadwork, sewing, um, screen printing. And then, of course, the husbandry section that's teaching them as well how to work with livestock, okay. which actually falls under the agricultural section. And, and, and that is, you, you've got chickens? We've got broiler chicks, laying hens and a piggery. And that's all, once again, nothing that we wanted. <laughs> but we've got a memorandum of understanding with the Free State University and all their students come and do their community service here. And that's how things get in started mm. and what happened with the husbandry those um this, the head of the agricultural department approached Willem and said look we would like to train people in the area how to do broiler chickens if we put up one pen here would you be prepared for them to be trained here we'll give you the pen the chickens right and the food right up to slaughter date and then mm. you're on your own and we were only too pleased because at that stage we had about 30 people needing training in that, which we used the volunteers working here mm. as well. And God just blessed it abundantly because from that one pen, we fed our children, we give food parcels and we sell as well. Because that's our one part of income towards our self-sustainability. And we've just two years ago completed our sixth pen. Wow. just from the profit of that. So we just produce Seriously. more and more. So now you've got a source of income as well. Yes. You're producing your own chickens yes. and, and, and pigs. And, and so Nathan, from your side, just business people, how many business people are involved helping and supporting this work of God here? Numerous business people in the city and, and people from overseas that actually um, have a vision to fund this. So there's contributions coming all the time um, from different businesses in the city. Uh, not only supporting financially, but also manpower, uh, people that come and serve and just help love the kids. And I think that's the, the, the more important thing is yes. to shape yes. these um, kids that don't have a future, but to help give them a future. So uh, people coming to love and, and serve the kids, uh, mm. that's a big part of it. And has, has there been any talk about replicating this in other parts of the country? Errol, we've done it twice, which worked for a bit and then stopped because we couldn't be there hands on. Um, I said in the beginning, Jane Rist had the vision from God in 97 to, to, to care for the children. Yes. And her husband, Tim Rist, when he, was, he was a, went to Grahamstown, he was transferred there. He replicated it there as well. And there it was to the three sections. It was to the Bonnie House, the Edu Centre and the food production. So that is still running there. So but once again, I went down, we did the ground things with them and they carried on on their Absolutely. own. Absolutely. And yes. that's what we need, to, to catch the vision mm. and to run with the vision. Yes. But, you know, God has given it to you and your husband, Willem, and you're doing such a great work here. We're inspired just mm. seeing what, what God has done, starting with that one little place, one little place and what God can do with that, just because of the faith that you have. Our last section, our fifth and last section, is our social support section. Okay. A lot of the things I've spoken about fit into that with the food parcels, etc. But we work with Department of Home Affairs as well, where people in the community who come here need to get IDs, birth certificates, etc. Okay. But this is now added onto the social support section. As I said in the beginning, the University of the Free State is very involved here. Yeah? And they approached us, they had funding from the Flanders government to come and teach people sustainable living in South Africa, to build with waste, to use waste. And that's it's this building This there. is it. They An entire building built out of waste. 
That's right, yes. Okay. And this was the pilot project, the first project. They said we would benefit from it if they could use it as a training site. So people from all over the Free State attended here for 18 months. Um, if you look inside, you will see photos which will show you. This was an old derelict dam on the property. This was a dam? This was a dam. Push the door open here. So this was a derelict dam? Yes, that could do nothing that was standing on the property. And this is where they decided to build. And it's all built from waste. 1,200 tires. Wow. Hundreds of thousands of bottles, as you can see. And our children were very involved there because they were told, and the children that came from the Free State, a lot of children's homes were involved to teach them as well, to collect rubbish, okay. papers, anything. And the bottles are filled with all the rubbish they picked up. And it's really, it's replicated all over the Free State. They've built one of the occupational therapy, one of their clinics. They've built a play set, place for the children, all from the training that was done here. Wow. And so a derelict dam using waste and discarded material, and this is what you built. That's right. And we have scored amazingly because we now have had, a, we've got our own coffee shop in here, where we mostly so we get there the and shop. here with a kitchen. It, part of our skill section is also our own bakery and where we train people to do baking and cooking. So that does the catering here. And you've got a stage, a stage. there, so this is like an amphitheater? That's right, so You've got yes. the coffee shop and you've got people doing plays and, and performances? Yes. We've had a couple of functions here. The opening was in September. And then over the Christmas period, we had a carol evening here, one Sunday evening, where about seven different churches were involved. And we had the big screen up on the top and at the end of the carol evening we showed God is not dead too and then we gave them food and coffee and cappuccinos etc which is a marketing tool because at the moment there's not feet out here to really make it a coffee yes, shop yes. per se but a lot of the churches local churches um, get, bring Bible study groups out here keep do a little bit of training sessions etc and <clears throat> that is it's what it's like about yes um, Businesses could use this place. You've got the coffee shop and you've got like a stage there. It could be used for meetings, for all kinds of things. Nathan, you're a businessman. What do you think about that? You know, I think it's just brilliant if business um, can consider moving a lot of the meetings out of the city into a venue like this here. And it's one way business can sow into this ministry. So business people think if they don't have money to give, but they could actually move the meetings here. Yeah, no, it, w it will be great. And that's, you know, the way the businesses can sow into this great work. That is not only for Labo Laboni Village. The amazing thing is that it's helping people outside yeah. of this, you know, the walls of this, this, this wonderful uh, ministry that God has planted here outside Bloemfontein. Okay, Avril, we're standing here. Behind us, we can see some play play area for kids, you've got a daycare centre here, you've also got a nursery for children. Tell us about that. Right, Errol, that forms part of the edu centre. We've got four classes there, the baby class, which is actually daycare. A um, lot of the volunteers who work here on the property, we, we care for their children there while they're okay. working and learning a skill. And then we've got grade triple naught, double naught and naught, which is grade R, just before going to grade one, where we've got a qualified teacher who the children then are school ready. But um, we got very few of our children are young enough to attend there now. So we've got 54 children who come in from the community around Laborni every day for this facility. Because there's nothing in the area to, to help them? There, there could be, but they can't afford it because it's quite expensive to go to a nursery school. Wow. And a lot of the parents cannot afford it. So they come. So you guys are providing the service right here at Laborni. Right here for them, yes. Okay. And these children, even though they've got family and they sleep at home, they've still got the benefits of the Laborni children in as much as they get three meals, they get medication if they need it, if they need clothing they get it. And then some of the parents have got jobs, so they're coping. But those who haven't got work, they then also get a food parcel once a month for their to take home. So how do you finance all of that? The feeding, the, the tuition, all of that? Right, funding and, and fundraising. Um, we don't get any government subsidies or support at all. So everything we do comes from funding. And if I could just steal a little bit of time and tell you, in 2004, we had a very wonderful chairperson on our board, name of Bernard Yowett. 
and we were in severe financial trouble. So much so that I went to board meeting on Monday night and I said, we're not going to make it. We've got 3,200 rand in the bank account. I need a minimum of 54 just to pay all the monthly expenses next week and we're not going to do it. And everybody started arguing about government, government not supporting us, not coming to the party. And Bernard, in his extreme wisdom, just was quiet and he said, listen guys, you people are on the wrong track. This is spiritual warfare here. Forget about the world. We're now going to fast. It's Monday night. Friday we're coming together and we're going to break the fast together and hear what God is saying because I believe this is God's property. And we did that. And we came together on Friday afternoon and broke the fast. And 11 of us were there. And the thread of everything that God has said to us was exactly the same. This is my place. I called you to serve you. I will provide through my people. And this is where our funding is coming from today. Wow. From His people. Isn't that amazing? Yes. So you had to pray and fast instead of running off to government and asking people that God wouldn't want you to. God directs you and tells you who to go to, and He provides for the and need. And He provides. And, and two weeks later, we were sitting with over 400,000 rand in the bank that was not money that I'd applied for or asked for. It just came from as far as England, um, Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, Johannesburg. And it just, just came in. And that mm. was an eye-opener to most of the trustees because a lot of them hadn't fasted before. Very few of us had fasted. <laughs> yes. and, it, wow. and they were skeptical, but this was just an explosion of their faith. Yes. The way God provided. And today we've got 39 churches in, in the UK. We've got churches in Holland. Um, that are supporting That them. are supporting us. And it's through them that we are able to finance all this. this We've amazing. got a church in Netherlands that specifically pays for the children's education, our children at ordinary schools and the Edu Center. Yeah, you know, Nathan, I'm just thinking about, as, as Apple is speaking about churches in UK and in the Netherlands supporting this work, um, are there any churches in South Africa that are supporting this work? And locally, we've got 42 churches that are on board um, that are supporting financially. Uh, many of them monthly, but uh, most of them um, as their budget uh, allows them to, to support. But uh, not only the financial support, but churches send volunteers mm -hmm. and manpower just to get involved in what's happening yeah. here. So that's also... It's so encouraging. It's so inspirational that, you know, the kind of people that God brought in here, starting with the Miss Sealand CEO, who wasn't a Christian, that gave the money to buy the property, and then churches, KFC coming on, and all kinds of people, uh, African lighting wholesalers, uh, supporting this work. It's growing, it's growing, it's growing. Uh, and amazingly, when you faced a financial challenge that, you know, people were saying, why don't you go to government? And yet God had to intervene in that and say, no, not, not go to go government, go to my people. Mm -hmm. uh, God has called his people to support work like this. And I want to repeat that I am so inspired just listening to your story. Uh, you're feeding people outside of you, 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 you're teaching people skills so they can take care of themselves. All of these things has been done right out of this place, but you're facing a challenge. And we're walking towards the gate, which is the entrance of Le Bonne Village here, and you said that you've had some break-ins. Tell us about that. Right. Our biggest challenge with the chickens, especially in the pigs, is, is stealing. They break in. The, we've only got a barbed wire fence around you, so they cut the fence and they come through. And at one stage, uh, they were stealing our chickens that we were running at such a loss, the pigs, that it was terrible. Then we decided to put up a bit of devil's fork with funding we got and a gate. But the motor was stolen now again for the third time. And okay, so the motor of the gate was stolen. Stolen. We had, you see, we were worried about security of the children and staff on the property. Yes. So we decided that the motorized gate is the best option for them coming in and out, especially yes. in the dark. But as I say, after the third theft of the motor itself, no matter what we do to secure it, they, they, they come in here and they get it out. Okay, so then to, to, if you put a motor on this gate, because you need the motor, what is the, the, the best way of securing the entire village? Okay, the, per, the perimeter of the property is 1.7 kilometers. So we have to put up a security fence. Security fence. Yes, because um, the gate is, is, is security for the staff and children, but the fence is the okay. security for the property because okay. the present fence, they just cut it. So you need a proper security fence. Did you get any quotes perhaps from companies that can do that at what it would cost to 
to secure this entire property, the Labono village? We did. We, we, we got a couple of quotes. The, the proper security fencing that they can't cut anymore, that's 2.1 million. 2.1 million. Yes. Days. If you just go for plain Devil's Fork, as we've got around the gate here, we've just had a quote for 1.6. But, but, that's but the just best thing for you is, for the, the, is, is to protect the children, the property, the, the pigs, the, the chickens, uh, our the resources, all of everything, that. yes. And, it, and it's so necessary, um, Avril, yes. it is so necessary uh, what you're doing, the impact of what you're doing in this, in, in this place, uh, in, in the surrounding communities. Uh, it's just amazing and you are the hands and feet of Jesus and I am convinced there are business people out there that can give you the 2.1 million, whatever you need, to put this proper fence around this, this property uh, so that this, this work can prosper. I think every Christian out there watching this must be saying, yes, we want this work uh, to prosper here outside Bloemfontein, but not only here, to be replicated in other parts of our country because it's so needed. There's so many children, there's so many destitute children that need the help, that need the education. There's so many people that need life skills training. And God has given you all the resources to get the job done. But you're standing here vulnerable. Your motor of your gate has been stolen a couple of times. The pigs and the chickens have been stolen. And you're using that as, as, as income. That's you're selling right. these things and bringing income. And so feeding that, the children. And feeding the children. And here we are with this. And I want to make a plea, along with Avril Slamman, that is doing such an excellent work, the chairperson of the board, Nathan Pillay, that has done so much for uh, this work here in Bloemfontein. And we want to make an appeal to somebody out there that is a business person or a couple of business people that can come together, 2.1 million, that's all it takes, to put a fence around this property to protect the incredible work that... Willem and uh, Avril Snyman is doing here at Le Bonne Village, outside of Bloemfontein. And we, we're going to pray and we're going to trust God for this work as we stand here. We're going to pray for you, Avril, and for your husband, Willem. Somewhere here he's doing some work, but we're going to trust God um, that this work will increase. It will prosper in every way. We're going to trust and pray and ask God to provide this fence. In the next few weeks, yeah. this fence is going to be around him. We're going to trust. We're going to put our faith with your faith. And that somebody out there is going to support this. And that this work and what you've done here, the, the, the template God has given you, is going to go around the country. Yeah. And it's going to answer to the need of people, the real needs of people. Because I believe that is, you know, the work of God is ministering to the needs of people. As much as we can preach and do all of the things, when we minister to the needs of people, that's where we're doing the work of Jesus Christ. So, Avril, in the name of Jesus, we pray for you, myself and Nathan. Lord, we... We bind our faith with Avril and Willem Sneeman. Mm. We thank you, God, for the work that you've birthed here, the yes, work Lord. you're doing in this beautiful, tranquil setting. Mm. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything you've given them. And your word says that every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from mm. the Father Amen. of lights, with whom there's thank no you, shadow or turning or variation. And God, we, we stand with Avril and we pray, God, for this fence that is needed. Yes, Lord. Security fence. It costs 2.1 million. Yes, but Lord, you are our provider. Yeah. You are Jehovah Jireh, the Amen. God that provides for all of our needs. And Lord, we yeah, pray for Avril God. and Willem's needs. We pray for the needs of Labone Village. We, Lord, we cancel every attack on this, this wonderful yes, ministry, every theft. Father God, we pray that you would put a hedge of protection mm, thank around you, it. Thank you, Father. And Lord, that you would protect this work, that you would grow this work, that you would prosper this work so that it would go all over this nation, God, yeah. so thank that you, the Father. needs of children may be met in the name of Jesus, not only their physical needs, but their spiritual needs. Lord, as the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ comes to these young people, they will grow up in the knowledge of God. Mm. That is yes, the primary Lord. focus here, Lord. And so, God, we pray for this fence, 2.1 million, God, that you would send people that would give this, that would erect this fence around this property, that this ministry might prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, we pray your anointing and your blessing on Avril and on her husband. Father, may, the, may this work grow, yeah. may it replicate it all over the country. Mm. And so, God, we just thank you. We thank you for Nathan Pele, for his business, as he supports this work and get other business, uh, businessmen in the area to come and support it, Lord. We just thank you that the work you, of Jesus Christ will prosper um, in every place that it is planted in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. We thank you, God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Earl. Oh, I guess you. Thank you.
Henny Miller, it's such a great privilege to be with you here on your farm called Camp Unity. Now, Henny, uh, you're a businessman, essentially, but I see you as a marketplace ministry, minister because your focus uh, appears to be advancing God's kingdom, building God's kingdom. And Camp Unity, I think, is a great example of that. We, we, I don't know how many kilometers outside Bloemfontein. Uh, it's 39, depends from where you measure it. Okay, 39 yeah. kilometers outside of Bloemfontein on this beautiful, tranquil um, farm with this hill in the background. There's so much going on here. Uh, but I want you to, to tell us what your vision is for Camp Unity. I think what, Errol, thank you very much and thank you for the opportunity to share something that's very close to my heart, what God is busy doing. And just maybe to take one step back, I was not always focused on God's purpose for my life. Okay. I was basically a driven business guy for many years and uh, that was my whole life. Until God allowed something to happen to me and I later found out why. Just down here, there at the gate there of Camp Unity, I was driving one day with the motorcycle and I was, it was a lovely day. And as I jumped over a little hill, the front wheel twisted. Okay. And I was not concentrating, I was not holding it strong enough. And I had an accident where I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know uh, where I was. I was totally lost at like a big black hole. But I felt something was wrong because I was able to put my tongue through my lip here. My total lip was cut here. My arm was broken, I couldn't use my arm. So for some time I was totally out of it until I eventually phoned my wife and I asked my wife, does she know where I am? And she made a joke. She said, you're supposed to know where you are. But uh, eventually I ended up in hospital. But the beauty out of that, and that's why I believe God allows everything to happen for a purpose. I'm a strong believer of that. And then eventually I had a lot of interaction and talking to God through the Holy Spirit because I couldn't sleep in the nights. And one night I remember so clearly when I asked him again, why did this happen in my life? Of course, I was not really mobile, my arm was in a sling and I couldn't sleep. And then I heard so clearly, I can hear it like we're standing here. God said to me in an audible voice, he said to me in English, he said, I've slowed you down so you can hurry up. And I asked God now, what, what does it really mean? And then he made it very clear. He said, I've slowed you down in your world so you can hurry up in my world. Wow, that's profound. So that's the be that was the beginning of the seriousness to get serious with God's work because I know I would not live forever. That was part of my revelations I got. I thought I'm going to live forever. Mm. And I suddenly got a sense of urgency because I know that life is short, even if it's only maybe 80 or 90 years, mm. depending on how long you live. So, so to summarize then, so Henny Miller, you this businessman chasing success, more money, more business. And then you have this accident on this farm with yes. your motorbike. Yes. Lose your memory. Yes, total. And, 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 and then you spend this time of recovery. Yes. And in that time, God meets with you. God comes to speak to you and tell you what he just said to you. Yeah. Slow down and hurry up. Yes. Slow down in your world, hurry up in my world. So that sort of obviously focused your, you know, that my purpose, yes. what God is calling me to do. And so what happens from there? Uh, from there, I really spent more time because I suddenly understand that I've got to be led more by the Holy Spirit and not by my own thinking only and my own thoughts and my expertise or my experiences. So we bought this, this farm, this farm on this side, that's called Arundel. Okay. We bought this farm in uh, 2006 from a farmer who was living in South Africa with no hope. The previous owner had no hope and he just this, he went to Australia. He wanted to do nothing with South Africa anymore. We bought that as a weekend place and we came down here. We got a lovely river down there. We'll probably look at that a little bit later. And we started to dream what God wants to do here. And then uh, one day me and my wife were sitting in that copy under one of those trees there. And we said, now if we want to develop a youth training center, uh, how we do that down at the river? And then we looked over at this premises next door here, that's another farm belonging to another owner. And we looked at the building at the back there. We said, gee, that would be a lovely place to have a, uh, a youth conference center. And by the way, the next day, if, when I talked to the owner, I say, are you considering one day to sell? He says, yeah, actually yesterday we start thinking of selling this place. Wow. So I don't know why, but obviously God's got a reason for that. And we bought the place. And uh, from that, we started with the vision. I think the vision evolved over time. 
all the whole thing was not clarity from the beginning, but we knew from the beginning it's about youth, it's about training them, a new leadership for South Africa. That was the core message we got from that time. But the vision God gave you immediately was young people, That's youth. True. Right from the start, you knew that the vision is to train young people, to inspire young people, and to train them to be future leaders of this nation. Correct. Now, that's such a great and a profound uh, vision because in South Africa, as you know, the majority of our uh, population is under the age of 18. Yes. So we have most, mostly youth, yes. but a lot of them are facing serious, formidable challenges. Yeah. Uh, many of them are unemployed. Yes. are getting involved in crime and violence and drug addiction and alcoholism and sexual promiscuity and all of these issues. Yes. And we as a church, we as God's people need to put the focus on young people. Otherwise, we're going to lose this generation. Yeah. And I think this vision is from God, obviously. So tell us what your plans are. How do you plan to achieve the overall objective of bringing young people here, training them with a God-given destiny? Errol, that was from the beginning. The, our first vision that developed from that stage was more to uh, uh, develop uh, what we say the premises yes. and let people use it for that purpose, like okay. schools, um, uh, churches, whatever. But uh, lately it has changed a lot with our new development. I'll talk a little bit later. But from that stage, after we bought a farm, our first focus was to convert the old farmhouse okay. into a training center. Which is this, here. this is the place. It's called Inver. The farmhouse is called Inver. So there can be a sleeping place for 50 people at the moment. At the moment, there's a camp on going there. They're all excited. They had a nice meal already. And we've got, we built onto that some uh, more accommodation, some, uh, some uh, places where the people can use the bathrooms, etc. We've built another little house outside there already for accommodation and then I think about two years ago we had a nice interesting visit in, in Wales at a similar kind of thing where God were where people were meeting God on a very ex uh, exclusive area God showed us 10 basically 10 activities to take place here 10 uh, uh, boiling points or fire play, uh, where things are happening and I, if, if I can just go through that and I'll come back to your big question about what I perceive and how we can ultimately roll this out not only here in a free state but eventually in South Africa because mm. the need for youth is bigger than what I and you can really know yes. because I've worked with the youth for a long time and I've seen a lot of need there Yes. Uh, uh, very critical things need to happen there. But just to come back to what's happening here, and then we'll go into that direction. Uh, out of the 10 things, six things are running already. So there's still four projects coming, and we're busy with those four projects slowly but surely. But the first one is the old farmhouse. We're happy with this. It's running properly. We've got a lovely couple here, Henry and Twani Furi at the moment, managing the whole place here. Okay. And people love them. Part of that is like a little, uh, little uh, fam, uh, like a little animal enclosure, okay. where children, especially younger children, can experience animals. So that's we're full of ostriches at the moment. So that's a lovely place. This third one is our mountain at the back there called Mount uh, Holgota, with the three crosses on at the back there. And that's uh, actually we did not even initiate that. One of the uh, family groups that were here, or, or church groups, they decided to do it for us. Okay. After the weekend we got there, the crosses were up there. We so say, in English, that is Mount Golgotha. Golgotha. Golgotha, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so that is basically a very nice place where they go in the evenings, they go and sit at the cross, uh, the young people, and, they and spend, spend time, time with, with, the Lord. with the Lord. Yeah. So that's the third thing that's already running. The fourth one that's running is, I'm excited about that one, is on top of that mountain. We call that Mount Moses because Moses was meeting the Lord always up in the mountain. That's right. So up there we built some nice two little uh, covers there. It's not houses. It's just to take you, if there's rain, to get you out of the rain. And there's a place, it's like a relationship mountain where people spend time to be in unity with God first. And then relationships, especially fathers and sons where they can spend weekends there with no cell phones whatsoever around a campfire and talk about God's greatness and relationships. That is so, so uh, important, uh, Eni, because another big problem, challenge we face in South Africa is uh, fatherlessness. Well, that's a major problem. All over this country, yeah. young people losing yes. their way yeah. because of fatherlessness. Yes. Um, not having a father in the home, or if there's a father in the home, that father is not engaged in his family, in the lives of his children. And there's a promise in the book of Malachi that God is going to return the hearts of the fathers to the children. Correct. Uh, Correct. But I think significantly this is what you're doing, already beginning to do, is to encourage fathers and sons to go up to that mountain and spend quality time together yeah. and to build a relationship that is so important. Yeah. So that is your fourth 
That's a, uh, but that's a fourth one running already. Okay. And just to add on that, part of the whole thing is we're trying to talk to fathers about uh, free generational thinking because the, uh, in the Bible it says very clearly, uh, a wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. That's right. But we very much in South Africa, a one, one generational mindset. Yes. So we haven't moved to the fact yet that whatever we do on earth must be taken over by our uh, inheritance exactly. by our children exactly. and their children one day. Yeah, the God we serve is a multi-generational God. Abraham, Isaac and Jacob yeah. and beyond. So what we're planning here is actually not even for us to fully experience one day, it's going to be for the future generation. Yes, very yeah. So the, the fifth one that's already running is our little, that store over there, that white store there. That is like a skills development training center, but it's also like a factory. We're busy there with a project where we're now going to cut about 300 trees down and we're going to make uh, all the wooden requirements for our new Beitelich school. I don't know what you call that in English, so we call it, uh, I don't know if there's an English name for that, Beitelich school, uh, Felt school. Okay. That's Afrikaans name for it. Field school, yeah. Field school. Okay. yeah they, they have that uh, many places in the world where children, uh, where, uh, where schools go for a, like a holiday, in, in a summer holiday kind of thing. In America, they've got that. Okay. Okay, but that's for youth people mainly, but I'll talk more about <coughs> it later. So that's the fifth and the, and the, the sixth one that's running at this stage. So that's one, two, three, four, five. And, and the sixth, no, the sixth one at this stage, that was number five. Number six is we got outside here an old church building that was part of the farm. And that is for local, local development of the people in this area okay. of Tierpoort. By the way, the, the previous name for this area was called Kafferafir. That was the previous original name. This whole river running from the dam through here is still called Kaffer Fier today. But they've changed it over years now to Tierpoort. Okay. So it's quite a significant thing to see what's happening here at this area. But that's for local development. We had a soccer team there, there's a church there, a, a crash and a, a shop. So those things were basically, it's a vision of that to serve the local community. Okay. So that's the six things that's according to us running at this stage. And then the four things that we're working on very hard and the one priority this year is this building at the back. For 150 young people to sleep there, a nice conference room. We've got beautiful plans drawn up for that already. So we're very excited about that. By the end of this year, it should be finished. So the year 2017, that should be open fully and running. Fully functional. Full, fully functional. Now, Henny, it's such a great vision because it's so needed again uh, yes. in this country. And even as we speaking here, there are some young people there having some uh, uh, festivities or uh, just uh, playtime. Yes. Um, I'm just looking around this place and I'm thinking about people, uh, young people that's been in drugs, uh, been in gangs, and if they're taken out of that, they obviously need to be taken somewhere yeah. where they can be in a tranquil surrounding, a safe place yes. where they can find themselves again and where they can find God, where they can spend time with the Lord, where healing and restoration can take place and this place obviously serves that purpose because it's yeah. it's far outside of the city of Bloemfontein yes it's in this tranquil area you have, you have just about everything going around yeah I see you even have some vegetable farms on the side there you, 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 you you're growing vegetables so it's a lot to get young people involved in and that's precisely what we need to do do you have any plans to replicate this in other parts of the country that as I start talking to people about what we're doing here, I hear there's a lot of need yes. right through this country. Yes. It's massive. It's bigger than what we can think of. And you're talking about the drug side. That's only one side. I think the, the biggest problem I see among youth is the fact they, they grow up without fathers, not, not even if the fathers are there, but the relationship. Like this. So I, I see among young people a lot of rebellion. Yes. That's what's happening in schools today. They, they don't have respect for authority. And they have respect for the family, for the father. They, they call them by names. And you can't give them hiding anymore mm. <laughs> because corporate punishment is out. Yes. And you can't really discipline them properly through that way. So uh, th that's a, that is so needed. And that's going to be one of our focus points to ask the schools to send their top 10 rebels to a yeah, camp. To camp unit. Yeah, yeah. And we've got people already, and it's amazing how God are putting together the speakers already or the people who will train to them. So you're going to have all these. These skilled people, these people that God has given gifts and talents to yes. come here and work with these young people that you're going to... And how, do, how are you going to draw young people, these, these people that, young people that need help? How are you going to get them to Camp Unity? We're just in the Bloemfontein area, in the Free State, there's many schools. 
So we're going to have different camps through the year. There's actually, in my mind, three camps we're going to do here on this. Uh, we can, will eventually be able to handle 200 people, 50 in this and 150 that side. So 200 and maybe if they have tents, up to about 250. Okay. Our conference room will be big enough for that. But the idea is to have uh, a coordination between all the schools. We'll start at varsities, but more the schools, the guys who are starting to leave school. And then to have certain camps planned what kind of topic we want to talk about. Mm. And there's many topics. Some of them will be career topics. One of the ideas is to have a career week. Somebody wants to be a doctor to invite the schools to say, you can only send from your school five or 10 people and that school. We want a multi-racial connection also. Yes. We don't want only one school to come. We actually want people from the black township that colored all the townships to send people from their schools. And we'll have 200 people represented by maybe 20 or 30 schools. And then we've got people in that profession, if we do the career one, mm. we'll take people that's doctors that's successful and Christian ones. We can then for that week spend time with these young people and coach them in a, in a, in a calling in that specific career. Yeah. Oh, that's such a wonderful vision, Annie. Now, the name of this place is Camp Unity. Why did you call it Camp Unity? I was looking for a name and I think thought of Camp David in America because that's biblical names. And as I was sitting one day down at the river praying and talking to the Lord, I, I looked around and said, Lord, I, I, we need a name that can actually symbolize you. Yes. And then the word unity start popping up in the Bible. And the more I dwell on the word unity, I came upon that verse that says, with his unity, God commands a blessing that's of right. his people. And that spoke to my spirit so strong because suddenly I saw that first unity with God and then unity. And that's the way the cross is so symbolizing the, the vertical cross, unity upwards. And then a horizontal cross, unity with your wife, your husband, your children, your co-workers, the, the group, the team, the sport teams. All of that is all about unity, but in the Lord all the time. Yeah, you can't get unity. If your heart is not right with God, your heart won't be right with other people. So, so first. True. First priority is getting your life right with God, your heart and your walk with God, and then you can interact with your brothers and sisters without any problems. Now, um, there's people watching this program and they might be asking, I love that vision. Yes. I want to, perhaps I want to replicate it where I am. I want to get some information on how we can do something similar where we are. So how can people get hold of you, Henny? They can get hold of me. I think the best way to go on our website for Camp Unity, it's simple, www.campunity.co.za. Okay. Put the email inquiry there and ask specifically for my name, Henny, then I will then make contact with them. Okay. So Henny, we, we, we want to thank you for the tour. Yes. Thank you for bringing us to this beautiful place and, and explaining the vision of Camp Unity. I think this place is going to be a haven of rest, a place where many young people will come and receive transformation and healing and, and all of the things they need. And perhaps a number of the uh, important future leaders of this nation is going to come out of this camp. We've seen that actually where people will come one day back here and bring their children and say, there, I made a commitment to the Lord at this premises because I remember it when I was at camps it's where a total transformation takes place because you're actually in an environment where that's conducive for that kind of relationship to take place where you say God I know my purpose I know what you called me to do I'm going to lift that for the rest of my yeah. life so this is where destinies are going to change yeah, that's new right. dreams are going to be formed that's yeah at Camp Unity but thank you for being the visionary behind it for for using your finances and the time and the energy and the passion to establish something like this and you're doing it for other people. It's not for your children, it's for other people's children. And it's for the future of this nation and we need it so desperately. And Errol, what's important on that is that we don't see this only for Camp Unity Vision. We see this for National Vision. We like to take partnership hands one day with other business people or people in all the provinces in the country who's got similar kind of leadership, youth leadership visions. Yes. And we start putting together a plan of action, how we can transform the potential leadership into great leaders one day for South Africa in a political arena, in all fields of society where they can make an impact because the light that the Bible talks about, Mark, Mark 5, uh, Matthew 5, is so powerful to say that we've got to be the light and the salt of this world. That's right. And I think that's the critical thing that my wife's got a very nice story about, but we believe in that. 
that uh, Christians should be seen as the light and the salt. Yeah. And they should make an impact wherever they are. And that's the ultimate goal, that people who come from here go back in their schools, eventually in the adult world, in the universities, and they draw that kind of, they carry with them that image the whole time, the whole time, that I'm, I'm actually the light of God. I'm bringing the kingdom of heaven to earth because that's the prayer of Jesus. Absolutely. Bring that given and make it uh, alive in this make world. Yeah. And, living. and we'll do that through the sports field. We'll talk probably another time about living ball sports fields. We've got another vision, living waters, retreat still coming and we still got a little retirement village also coming. So maybe in a, in a few years time we'll come back with our cameras yes. and see what you've done now but the, the, the other developments as you grow this place and I believe God is going to bless you and extend this work because it's so critically needed in He's South good. Africa. Yeah. So any thank you, God bless you, thank you and everyone. we bless this place and may it go from strength to strength. I thank you very much for being here making the effort. Appreciate it.